Welcome to our lecture line. Now let's take advantage of our knowledge of the Euler equation and how to apply it. Here's some examples. How can we rewrite e to the i pi? Well, we realize using Euler equation that this can be written as the cosine of pi plus i times the sine of pi. And then we realize that the cosine of pi is a negative one and the sine of pi is zero. So this can then be reduced to the cosine of pi, which is negative one, plus i times zero, which means this is simply equal to negative one. How about e to the i times pi over four? Well, we do the same thing here. We can write this as the cosine of pi over four plus i times the sine of pi over four. And then we realize that the cosine of pi over four, since pi over four is 45 degrees, is 0.707. So this can be written as 0 0.707 plus i times 0 0.707. In this case, it might be better to write the i behind it so we don't have to use parentheses, but at least you have the idea. And what if we have something like this? Well, let's see here. We can separate those two. We can write this as e to the i times e to the minus pi over 2 times i. Okay, if we do that, then we can multi we can at least expand both of them and then multiply them afterwards. So this can be written as, that would be the cosine of 1 plus i times the sine of 1 and then multiply that times e to the minus pi over 2, so that would be equal to the cosine of pi over 2, because the cosine of a negative angle is the same as the cosine of a positive angle, like this, and then instead of having a plus here, we end up with a minus i times the sine of pi over 2. All right, well, the cosine of pi over 2, that's equal to 0, so that disappears, and the sine of pi over 2 is equal to 1, so this can be simplified to the cosine of 1 plus i times the sine of 1. Of course, these are radians. And then this becomes equal to the sine of pi over 2 is 1. So that's times a negative i. So now when we multiply that through, that becomes the following. This becomes equal to the negative cosine. Oh, or I should put the i first. Let me do that again. So that would be minus i times the cosine of 1. And i times i is a negative, is a i squared, that's a negative 1, times a negative becomes positive. That would be the sine of 1. And then we can reverse the order and write it as the sine of 1 minus i times the cosine of 1. So that would be the answer for the third one. So you can see that in each case, we can expand it and write it in terms of the sines and the cosines. And that's how it's done.